All right, guys, so now I'm gonna attempt to build the first cabinet, overhead cabinet, right over this area. It's gonna go from right about here to right here, which is gonna be about 60 inches. 60 inches long, and I'm leaving a little gap here because we're gonna have that kind of shower space here, and uh, we're gonna be standing in here, and if we have a cabinet here, we'll we'll hit our head and that wouldn't work so we're leaving a little gap there and we're also not going all the way to the end because the bed is going to be here right uh, right here and then we don't want a cabinet right over our head you know bonking our heads and stuff and we haven't done that wall because I want to get the electrical 100% before I panel that side up um, so that's why that side is still kind of uh, bare like that I drew that up last night just thinking about it and I was like, yeah, I think that'll work. And I put some steps in there. <laughs> but honestly, I watched a couple of videos and I was like, yeah, I'll make something like that. I'm just going to go for it. And you know what? Shouldn't be too difficult. Just some two by twos and some half inch plywood and uh, some quarter inch plywood as well. Just for the, uh, the outside. But basically, we'll get started with the frame. Let's go for it. Let's try it. Now I have some cardboard. I marked out where this shelf would come out to. And I just gotta make a little template. Bam, one cut. I did it, it's done. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, but <laughs> it's pretty close. It's pretty good. Yeah, what if I'm standing right here doing dishes? When I hit my head, pretty damn close. I'm gonna trim it back a little. Now my new template for the inner cabinets are gonna be like this. So one here, it's gonna be like that. And then there's also gonna be a two by two right here across the whole entire cabinet. So this will be the inside, uh, the inside walls, I guess. And then the outside walls will be without this because it'll end at the wall. So I think that's how I'm gonna do it. And I'm gonna cut, I have four pieces of these, and I'm gonna cut two of them like this, and then two of them on the edges. Uh, just leave it as is. Probably the weirdest way anybody's ever made a cabinet, but. This might work. Let's keep going. Let's check this out. Not bad. Yeah, that's definitely too deep. Not bad, not bad. Oh my gosh, this might work. All right, let me go fix this. It's actually not bad, just ignore the, the clamp for now. It's not too bad. And there's mounting points uh, on the wall and on the ceiling as well that I wanna mount to. making the base for the cabinets and I'm just using a half inch plywood I think this is what I'm gonna do just, uh, just line it up and then just trace it and cut it what I've been doing to cut these long pieces of plywood so I have this circular saw and I've been using a straight edge uh, whatever anything straight this is a just a one by three and also a couple clamps the lines there and then the gap between the line and the straight edge is about an inch and a half so I just measure that and then I also measure the other side make sure it's perfectly aligned and then 
I clamp down both ends to the plywood and I just cut that line. I can put it up against the underside of this. It's perfect. I just realized I got ahead of myself uh, again and the plan was to assemble the bottom uh, bottom of the cabinet after I mount the frame inside the van and that was so I can have some reach inside to the back here and up here um, yeah if this is just open it'll just be a lot easier for me when I install it when I try to install it into the van so I can either just take it off there's probably about uh, 10 maybe 8 to 10 nails in there oh, at least at least 10 nails in there I can just try to take it off or I can just try to mount it with it on. Uh, I think I'm going to take it off though. I think that's going to be the easiest thing. Just trying to mount it inside the van uh, with the bottom on is going to be a little difficult I think. I'm thinking it's going to go right around there. And what I'm going to do is use some really long screws and I'm going to actually screw it through the wood and then into the metal uh, into the frame of the van so it's really sturdy and it's not just holding by the wood so much so much movement in a van that i feel like over time it's just going to get weak and it'll probably you know end up getting loose and wiggling and then eventually coming off so i'm just going to try to do my best to screw it into the actual metal frame of the van and I think that should hold it pretty well I just made the first door and it's not perfect it got little gaps these pocket holes are just going straight into this these are all 45 degree angles and it's not perfect but I think uh, the next one will be better and just kind of roughly put it on there make sure it kind of matches Seems to match pretty well. Now I'm gonna put pocket hole, pocket holes right here, right here, right here, and here. I'm using these one and a half inch self-tapping screws. It's not perfect. Damn. I don't know. It's hard to. It's hard to cut these exact. So right now I'm just drilled into the wood. Now there's a beam that goes across right here on the wall. So that's, um, that's what I'm drilled into. And then a couple pieces on top. But now I'm gonna drill into the metal of the uh, of the van uh, with these heavy duty self tapping screws and that should hold it hold it there permanently mm. I mean that doesn't look too bad right there pretty steady I'm gonna put some more screws in but it's steady that ain't going nowhere and it's not a huge cabinet either, so we can't really stuff it with like that much weight, anyways. Um, so it's gonna be it's gonna be just fine. So today we're continuing to paint, and yes, we are filling our holes. Um, we filled the other ones as well. We just forgot to mention it. Get to it. Ooh, and as you can see right behind me, this is all our pottery that we're working on. Maybe once we get good, we'll start selling some outdoor chef light bowls. So I'm almost done with the floor here. I just put that cardboard there just because I need to put some stuff on it. Didn't want to damage the new floor. And I'm just doing the, the last bits here. And I have this little spot right here that I need to fill. And basically, it needs to go like this, about all the way in. So I need to take out that part there. So, 
So I'm figuring that out is I just put it right up against here, make sure that matches up, and then I'll just draw a line there, and then match that, match it up with this, draw a line all the way here. So this is the part that I need to keep, right? Because I just scoot it down and I just check. That's the width that I need to keep. Uh, and then this is the side that I need to cut out. So once I flip it over, it should be able to fit right into that spot. Uh, watch, you'll see. Yeah, that'll work. And uh, we need this little gap anyways for expansion. That's what it says anyways on the manual. So a little gap there, that's all right. All right, well, the floor is pretty much all done. Except for the trim right here. I'll put a little trim piece here that'll make a nice transition and uh, make it look much better than that. But these floors are pretty easy to put in. Uh, these tongue and groove style laminate floors. Uh, and the only place that I actually nailed it down was the first ones. The first row up there and over here as well. I nailed those down just so it doesn't move so I can keep that really straight line. And yeah, it looks great. It looks sweet. And everything else is, uh, yeah, it's not nailed in. And they say to leave a little gap because uh, the floor needs to be able to expand and contract. So yeah, that's what I'm going with. I was thinking about putting caulk all around it on the edges, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if you're actually supposed to do that, if you're supposed to leave a gap. You know, I'm just trying to follow the instructions. So this is what we used here. 100% waterproof, rigid core flooring with pre-attached underlayment. That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like on the bottom. It's got this little tongue and groove sort of system. So they kind of just tap into each other real nicely. Pet friendly, 100% waterproof, all the good stuff, stain resistant and all that. So we just got it from Home Depot. And really the only tools I used, this guy right here, a square, and then another one, a bigger one, a jigsaw, tape measure, and uh, a couple clamps, and actually a um, little, little sandpaper. And that's about it. Super easy job. Did it in about a couple hours, two, three hours. That's it.